Who's ready to stack some bills? We're making money, baby, the spacefaring way with a billion sons. One of the Osprey Blue Book series of war games by old Mike Hutchinson. You probably know him from a little game called Gaslands. This is an economic game, not a military one. We want to achieve our objectives by spending as little money as possible. We are going with the cheapest offer we can. The low bidder gets the prize. And what are we trying to accomplish? Well, we got our Black Star Field here, and these are the three objectives in the lingo of A Billion Sons. We call them contracts, and there are three of them. We saw the mining contract last time. I generated these over at uh, BillionSons.space, I think, or maybe it's Planet Smasher Games. That's Mike Hutchinson's uh, little online presence, and, and he's gone full-time. If you Google A Billion Sons download files, you can find the generator for this. Uh, normally, you use deck cards. I'm not going to worry about that, because we got Queen of Diamonds, Queen of Clubs, and King of Hearts. All of these contracts are in the book, so if you don't have, I mean, if you don't have the book, then go buy it, because it's a good book. For the mining contract, we're going to have an additional table and the scale of asteroids. We're playing a scale four game, so today we'll have four asteroids. In the last game, we had three. The objective here is to scan an asteroid with any ship. Then you'll draw a card. Now, our diamonds deck is randomized, and we don't see what's happening until we draw a card. That card will show us how many ore tokens are in that asteroid. Then we blow it up real good and replace it with that many ore tokens. And for every ore token we collect and get to a jump point, we make two space bucks. Two million credits, baby. And then, uh, yeah, so that's the Queen of Diamonds, which we've seen. We have not seen the quarantine contract. We set up another table. Three tables. We'll get the masking tape shortly. We're going to set up four facilities that are full of infected space zombies. We need to scan a facility with a utility ship, put, and that puts a medical team token on the facility. Then we scan the infected facility with a utility ship, and we discard that medical team, and we make the monies. Now, in this case, the deck is in descending order, and we can see how many cards are left in that deck. Notice at the end of round three, we discard the deck. So you only have three turns to scan and scan if you want to make your bones. This middle one is called Rexus Harvesting. It's a little complicated. I want to turn to page 48 of the rule book and show you exactly what a Rexus is. It's a Rexus pearl. In the center of a Harrington Felsman Rexus is a highly excited core of exotic matter with negative mass. It forces a bubble of agitated space-time to form around it. The antimatter pearl at the heart of the Rexus is the key to the no-fold... Null-fold toroid generator, which powers civilization and null-jump engines alike. This is the spice. I got one token. We just have the one of them. See the little hypercube in there? See the little funky space baby background? That is the Rexus Pearl that we have to mine. And it's a little wonky, so I want to go through this in a little bit of detail. Everywhere within six centimeters of the pearl is the Harrington Felsman Rexus, known as the Rexus Storm. It counts as dangerous space. When you move in through this area, if you're within six inches, you're going to take some attacks from just how dangerous it is around that. When a utility ship scans the pearl, each ship within scan range puts a maglock token onto the core of the Rexus Pearl. And I don't know. Maybe Let me bring the deck of cards in here. Let me just work through an example probably easier just to show you. In the end phase, if we have two maglocks, we discard those and we draw two cards. And we should probably draw from the proper deck, which would be the clubs. So the first card is the three. That's not it. Discard a maglock. Then we turn over the ace. We just scored four points. Now we're looking for the two. On the next turn, if we lock on two more times, we turn over the four and the two, and now we found the other Nexus Pearl, or Rexus Pearl, so that means we've scored a total of eight points there. At the end of round two, however, here's the trick, at the end of round two, discard all of the non-catalyst. So if we haven't turned over the one yet, we turn over everything except the one, 
and then place the catalyst on top of the club's contract deck. So that basically means if we wait until the third turn, I think we discard everything. At the end of the third turn, we can come scoop this up and score all eight of these. The Rexus Pearl is going to be a high priority for us, but late in the game. As I said, we have been promoted from intern to desk clerk at Yoyodyne Omni Systems. We raised enough money to increase our scan range to five. We are following the logistics tech tree. We're now playing a scale four game. We have two capital, which is not enough to unlock anything here. We would have to pay to unlock any of these other tech trees. Sometimes once you unlock some of your higher level techs, you can unlock a few of these other ones, but they're expensive. And I'm just going to wait and we'll see what happens at the end of this turn. I should point out the last game was a little easier than expected because I didn't generate enough combat ships. Now I generated plenty. That was a hard fought game. But for the sake of completeness, let me just provide my mea culpas. Normally what you'll do is every time you jump a battle group in, roll a d6, add the mass of that class. In the case of a fighter, it's just a straight d6. In the case of a mass 1 utility ship, that is the light utility ship, you will roll a d6 and add 1, and you'll deploy, well, to if you know, depending on what we got, it's either d3 light utility ships, it could be two uh, fighters, enemy fighters, IC stands for independent contractors, could be two gunships, could be a frigate. So it gets tough. What I did not do in the last game that I should have, at the start of each round, starting on round two, roll a d6, add the round number, check the table below. So starting on round two, you can start getting battle uh, frigates. Cruisers start to appear on round three. That's a lot of ships. And you roll for each jump point in play, meaning if I've got three jump points, I'm rolling three times and bringing three more battle groups on. This table is going to get crazy by the time we're done. I think, and, and this is one of the issues I have with most of the Osprey Blue Book games. They seem to provide a fun little, nice little package but, but then you sit down and you start going through the rules, and man, it's like a two- or three-hour game. They pack a huge four-by-eight punch into this slim little volume every time, even with the simplified rules for moving and shooting with the independent contractors. Not a complaint, just an observation. Let me throw some masking tape down on the table, and we can start throwing these objectives down so we can start fulfilling our contracts and earning that year-end bonus. Our decks of cards have a total of four cards apiece. That means you've got ten total. Mm. Our decks of cards each have four cards. The one, two, three, four, giving us a total of ten points. Double that. There are a possibility of scoring 20 points per. The five card is just reminding me that this shuffled deck is the clubs and this is Shuffle deck is the diamonds. The clubs, of course, is for the Rexus Pearl and the diamonds. Diamonds for the ore. We're, we're diamond mining out in the asteroid belt. I have to assemble, I have to drop these objectives onto random tables. And you can see we've got one table, two tables, three tables. They're different sizes. That's okay. Resources will not be evenly distributed. I'm going to roll four red dice to find out which of the tables the installations are on. One, two, three, four, five, six. I will roll four blue dice for the asteroids, and the black die to determine where the Nexus per Rexus Pearl is. I keep wanting to say Nexus, but it's Rexus. As expected, we don't have a whole lot going on in the largest sector of outer space. I might tighten this up a little bit just to just give myself a little bit less ground to cover. We've got two asteroids and two asteroids on the flanks. We've got two installations, two in the center, and a Rexus Pearl way over here. Bear in mind, with a total of 60 potential space bucks on the table, if I think that I can grab a total of 30 of them, and I want to make money by scoring at least coming out in the net. Now remember, every ship I buy costs me one victory point. There's 60 available. My target here is at least 20%. I need to net at least 12 space bucks. The question becomes, how much money can I spend and still think that I'm going to make that 20? I think that 
I can get away, and this is this is how my brain works. I am going to try to spend no more than twelve space bucks on starships. What does that mean? Looking at our ship costs, if I bring in a fighter wing of three fighters, now the good news is if I bring them all on at the same time, I'm only rolling for one independent contractor ship jumping in. But that's already going to set me back six space bucks. If I want to bring in a couple of light utility ships, that's two more. I'm up to eight. If I bring in two medium utility ships, I'm already up to 12. I may need to shoot for 15 and the gunship and hope that I can score 27 bucks. But that's really about what we want to do. So with all of that said, we're finally ready to start the game. It's time to break out the command deck. We get one command token for every scale. Scale four means we get four tokens plus three. I'm going to put four into the jump in. On this first turn, I'm going to drop two. <laughs> Should we skip tactical? Maybe we put... I, you know, I'm only going to bring in two ships in this first turn. Two groups of ships. We'll minimize the amount of vessels that are coming on the board. Then I've got two for the Seize Initiative. I'm going to get to go first in both cases. And I've got one command token down here in Tactical so I can invoke those technological superpowers if I have to. That's my plan. We'll see how long I stick to it. We are in the jump-in phase, and I'm going to have to boogie to get those... Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to have to bring in a bunch of light utility ships to start the game off. The rocks can wait a little bit longer. I'm writing these two utilities off. I'm just not going to deal with this table at all. We got two jump points. I'm going to bring in... Now, for each series I bring in, I think I'm maybe I should bring in medium utility ships to go deal with these guys first. I don't like that at all. Instead, let's drop our jump point here. That way we can bring our utility ships in. We can focus on these three for right now, and we can bring one ship in to go after this Rexus Pearl. I'm going to bring in one medium utility ship here, and I'm going to bring in two utility ships here. This is my light utility battle group. I've only got three turns to do this. Bear in mind, these guys can appear five centimeters from the center of the jump point, which I can, that puts them right about there. I can put them right up against the the objective and there may be a way to optimize objective placement but i haven't quite figured that out yet this guy is going to be able to get about that close and he's going to be done now because they're on separate tables i'm not going to i'm just going to get the ships down first and then i'll come back around and i'll roll to see who jumps in and in the case of the table over here on the left i roll a d6 and i add two for the oh i should also point out i'm using a red die here I've brought in a total of four credits worth of ships, so I'm four credits in the red. See how I do that? Ain't I clever? And then we'll, we'll figure out who's on the table first. That will let me, on the second turn, figure out who I want to bring in to counter. So I roll the three, add two for the medium ship, and that means we are bringing in a total of, well, we're at five, three gunships. Mike, are you kidding me? Like, this, I, I think this is a little harder than it needs to be, to be quite honest with you. Our gunships are going to be in red, and they appear as close as they can. So there's our three gunships that will appear over there. I have to roll a D6 and add one, because these are light utility ships. And again, I'm going to bring in two more gunships on this table. I don't have infinite gunships, Mike. So I have to use a yellow suspicious ship as a stand-in. Uh, you'd think I'd be able to afford a lot more gunships, given that it's just print rink and serial packet. What are you going to do? The deployment works a little something like this. And i got to read it, because I want to make sure I get this 100% right. When the... Oh, wrong page. There we go. Randomly select an objective on the same table as the jump point that triggered the IC's deployment. So over here, I've got a total of... Two, four, six, and eight. That is what I'm rolling for to decide what these gunships are interested in. With a three, they're interested in this asteroid. They deploy them as close as possible, but not more than their jump range. Set them up so that they're facing the player-controlled ship nearest to them. 
So that would be as close as possible within the jump range facing my poor little uh, MU ship. Gunships have a mass of three. No, that's a cost of three and a mass of one, meaning they can appear five centimeters out. They're still a little too close. So we'll, we'll bring them out that way. Uh, then for these two gunships, we only have two. So one through four and then six through eight. I roll an eight. They are going to appear right about there. The gunships still have a mass of one. So they will appear as close to this objective. That's five centimeters. So basically right up against it. There is some language in the rules about how this could be classed as dangerous space. The, the asteroid is dangerous space until you blow it up because these are all points in space. The scale of the ships is way out of scale to the ground scale, if you will. Out of scale to the scale of outer space. I think you understand what I mean there. Now we're done with the jump in phase. We move on to the and we did the command phase, the jump phase. Now we do the tactical phase, which means initiative. Remember that I spent my money on initiative. I can move this battle group. And the battle group has to stay within three centimeters of each other, or else you take a point of damage. So, as you can see, they you you pivot. And then you move four centimeters. And these guys, I'm going to go ahead and try to get as far away as possible. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to pivot up to 90 degrees. And we're going to move one, two, three, four. This guy is going to follow suit. And maybe a little bit of overlapping won't kill us. I, I don't think I'm going to do that, though. We'll leave it like that. So that's their movement. They First, we do issue orders. They did a vector move. Then we do passive attacks. So if these guys can shoot at my light utility ships. They take a shot right now with their auxiliary weapons. Gunships have blasters with a range of six centimeters, which is to about here. We're safe. This is why I'm glad I spent points on my uh, safety check, on my initiative, and why I wanted to know how many gunships am I facing. We're going to give another vector order. We're going to move out of range. This is why I wanted initiative, because now we can stay six centimeters away from these gunships. They're not going to be able to hit us with their auxiliary weapons, but I should have finished these guys first. These two light utility ships are going to do their active attacks. Now, they don't have any. Then they're going to do their scan step. Scan a single object or ship within a scan range. Of, well, in my case, it's five centimeters, so I could move these guys over here as long as they're within five centimeters of the center of this guy, of, of this planetoid, the, the, the installation, I should say. So I can keep them way out. Now, maybe they didn't have the movement for that. Uh, and likewise with him, although in the case of the medium utility ship, I, I'm running out of table space here. Be that as it may, these two guys are going to scan that facility. We put a couple of, and what that means is, we're going to put a couple of med teams on the installation. The medium ship is going to do the same over on that left table. And that's going to end the turn for my guys. Now the enemy ships get to go. And here's where having all of these gunships on the table might not hurt us. We'll start over here on the right. Select a random objective on the same table as the independent contractors from a non-exhausted source. In other words, if we've already mined all of the space rocks, these guys are not going to be interested. We haven't scored any points yet, so we'll do the same thing. Two, four, six, eight. We roll to find out what they're interested in. Two, four, six. They're interested in this rock right here. If no ship from the battle group is within three centimeters of that objective, each ship pivots to face moves twice its thrust value, that's going to be 8 centimeters, attempting to land 3 centimeters from the, or as close as possible from the objective. So they'll end right there, and we take, now we have, we get to take a passive attack, I don't have any, they're not in my, any of my firing arcs, and then we check and, oh look, they're still beyond 6 centimeters, 
So they are ignoring my medium utility ship. I'll take it. The next order of business is to deal with these guys, one through four, five through eight. What are they interested in? These guys are going to blast on over here. If no ship is within three centimeters, we move twice their thrust value, trying to wind up as close as possible to being three centimeters away. Bear in mind, three centimeters from the center of this installation puts them, well, okay, they have to move twice. So we'll, let's, let's do this strictly by the book. They're going to move four centimeters to here. The jump point doesn't matter. And then they're going to move another four centimeters, and they'll end their turn facing my poor little light utility ships who are about to die. Because that will put them... Well, this one is within... Oh, they're not within six centimeters. In this case, we're measuring from the point of the ship... Oop. Get back there. So there's the point, and there's the point. They're just out of range. Remember that the ship exists on a, an infinitesimal little dot right on the point of each of these tokens. That means, and this is why I'm talking, why I said earlier, we could probably do some overlap because they're actually in two different points in space, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of, I'm going to save some headaches. I don't put any of my tokens on top of other tokens. Actually, hold on. I don't put any cardboard on cardboard. The, the med team tokens, obviously I do. But I don't put cardboard on cardboard, and we'll just say that because of the, the whatever, Geller field or... You know, I, I know Dunk is in the movie theaters right now. So whatever justification we have to have for, hey, give me a little breathing room. That's what we have. Really, it's fine. Nobody gets shot. I'm very happy with the results of this first turn. Now we go on to the end phase. And we check the end phase for each of our... Um, each of our objectives. And this is another important confounding factor that I didn't include last time. At the start of the end phase, before earning revenue, if there is a greater combined mass of these guys than friendly ships within three centimeters of the objective, discard the top card. Hold on a second. Are you telling me that I wasted money on long-range scanners? I think this should be within scan range, not within three centimeters. The three centimeters is scan range. We're tied. I've got light utility ships. I don't think the fact... Let's see if there's a greater combined mass of independent contractors. Discard the top card from the contract deck. Even if the independent contractor can't score those points, that's bogus, man. So, anyway... I am going to issue the, the, the fatwa, and I'm sure people are going to like be like, oh, I thought you said play the card, but the rules is written. Hey, you know what, pal? You, you know what? This is beta testing, all right? And, and I'm telling you right now as a beta tester, you need to fix this. You need to say if the ships are within scan range to allow those of us that invest in logistics the tie so we get to keep our points. Over here, we're boned because the... Diamond card, I have to discard the top card, and wouldn't you know it, three points off the table, six dollars, six, I'm down to 54 potential revenue. Uh, discard the top card from the contract deck, and now we're done. But that is why I only wanted to bring a few ships on at a time. In the command phase, round two, I'm jumping in two more groups of ships. I want my first three ships to go, and then I've got two superpowers so that we are ready. The next phase of the round is the jump phase. And who's jumping where? Everybody's jumping into this table right over here. I'm going to bring in a couple of gunships. And they're going to appear right about there. Again, I can appear anywhere because gunships have a mass of one. I can appear anywhere within five. So we'll bring them, we'll swing them way out wide. Because they jumped in and they are mass two ships, I have to, well, first of all, I was at four and gunships cost three apiece. That takes me up to a total of negative 10. I haven't scored any points yet. So I put that on my command deck and then I have to roll D6 plus two and we get eight we get a frigate no it's the mass number 
of frigates. So we get two, wait, frigates? Two frigates, where are they? Yeah, two of the frigates. These are big boys. And they are going to appear, uh, randomly select an objective as the jump point that triggered their deployment. Two, four, six, eight. I gotta roll my D8 again. Eight. So, oh, wouldn't you know it? They're gonna appear right in front of the Rexus Pearl. Deploy them as close as possible, but not more than their jump range. So, our two. Oh, I should be using enemy frigates. Let me do that. So, my frigates are gonna appear right down here as close as they can get. Those are big, and they're dangerous, and they're terrifying. Then I'm going to bring in two light utility haulers because I need to get them down there. I really need them to do some mag locks before we lose all of our points. They only have a mass of one. I roll a d6. I add one, and that seven <laughs> means we're going to deploy. Now, because they're mass one, I only have one more frigate appearing, which is good because it's the last frigate in my collection and we roll to see where they come on, and that third frigate is also going to appear down here. So these independent contractors are terrifying, and I don't, I don't know. I think I'm probably not going to make a profit on this one. But that's the end of the jump-in phase. So, oh, and because I brought in two more light utility carriers, I am now up to a total of 12 in the red. I'm sure my board of directors is looking at me like, what are you spending all of our money on, you lunatic? Remember, we're going to have two more groups come in at the end of this turn, D6 plus 2, so we could have another couple of frigates appear. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's starting to feel a lot more like a day job, isn't it? As I said, I have three of my Seize the Initiative tokens. So let's start with these two light utility vehicles. We're going to pivot move four and then we'll pivot and move four and we're just kind of circling around the then we have to suffer some we got to stay six centimeters away from these guys which we do then we so because otherwise we'd suffer a passive attack step then we would do jump out but we don't want to do that then we do our active attacks we don't have any of those these guys don't have offensive weaponry then we do our scan step and on the quarantine contract when you scan an infected facility with a utility battle group, you discard a friendly medical team token, you gain the top two cards, because I did it twice, I'm going to gain 8, 14, and now we are in the profit by $2. So I shift to my blue die to remind me that I, still, I, have, I can either bring on more ships, or I can let it ride... And hopefully, get a little closer to meeting my objective. So we've moved that ship. Then we're going to bring this guy. We're going to swing him around 180 degrees and bring him as far out as we can. So we're just bringing him to right about there, I think. He's going to scan, and we're going to score two more. Well, actually, that's four more points. At least if I'm doing this right. And then that takes us up to six profit. Uh, the board of directors is starting to feel a lot better. Now the question becomes, what do we do with one of these two groups? Do we bring the gunship into position and open fire on these gunships to try to draw aggro? Or do we try to scoot our light utility ships down here? I think um, either way, I kind of think we're going to die. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring... Uh, ooh, the other thing I can do is bring my gunships. Now I do have some superpowers. So may, once at the start of a turn, spend a token to permit it to shoot its primary weapon system, even if it performed a high G maneuver this activation. And what that means is we can bring these guys, we can, oh, so we can pivot. Do we want to do engage in the primary arc to gain rerolls against? We can vector, we can move twice. So we can, we can move. These guys have a movement of six. So I can bring them six centimeters to here and here. And then if I vector, I can turn them 90 degrees like so. But when you turn them that much, they can't fire their primary weapon unless you have a command token, which means I can. I can fire. It says spend a die. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, 
to shoot its primary weapon system even if it performed a high G maneuver. Passive attacks mean that this guy... Ooh, we have to bring him back this way just a little bit. So we turn, move six, stop right there so that we're behind the front arc of these three ships. And then we get to unload. But because... So the passive attack... Ooh. Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, we should check. Our passive attack means we're going to get to roll... We're within six there. We're within. We're outside of six there. Let me check the rules and see what happens there. In the passive attack step, each ship that has a target, a valid target, fires its auxiliary weapons. I'm going to say that these two ships have these light utility ships in their sights. So they're going to get to make a passive attack. At six inches, the light utility ships have a silhouette of four. That means the independent contractors are hitting on fours uh, or less. The six is a dud. It's an automatic miss. Three hits means I have to suffer. I get three saves. If I go power to shields, I'll save on twos. Oh, you know what, though? Now that I think about it, when I scan to each of those, I have the superpower that for each card I reveal, I get back a command token. That means I've got four, three extra command tokens to play with. I'm going to use all three of them. I'm going to save on fours or less. These are the games, guys. All right, I take three blamage, and light utility ships have a total silhouette of four. So I got to put four tokens. Four damage tokens down on those light utilities. Oh, no, I don't. You know what? Now that I think about it, you're only allowed to use your auxiliary weapons against the active ship. That was still funny, I but it, it didn't make any difference because the auxiliary weapons... This is why I'm a clerk and I'm not the CEO because of little mistakes like this. Okay. I'm le That's staying in, by the way. I'm not editing that out because it's too funny. We are to the point where I can take... Eight shots against these gunships with a silhouette of four. And we're hitting on... Uh, what is our... Oh, we're hitting on fours or less. These three are duds. There's nothing you can do. They're automatically going to miss. This is a miss. I get a total of... Ones are worth double hits. So I get three, four, five hits. And those five hits are going to save on ones or less. They're only going to save one. That means they take, and gunships do... What's the damage on their on their blasters? Just one damage. So I do four damage, and that's going to remove one gunship. And I'm going to randomize it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I rolled a six, which means we actually took off this one. Which is good, because I think that's going to save our light utility ships bacon. All of my ships have gone. Now we have to figure out what the enemy ships do. We'll start over here, where the gunships are going to select a random objective. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're going to stay where they are. If no enemy, if no ship from the, that doesn't matter, pivot each ship so it's facing the player control battle group nearest it. Wait. Uh, if no ship from the battle group is within three inches of the selected objective, each one pivots to face that objective, but it's already near there. Pivot the ship so that it's facing the player-controlled battle group nearest. That's those light utility ships. Discard D3 damage tokens. Suffer any passive attacks, which we don't have. And then if the IC battle group has one of your battle groups in range and arc of fire, each weapon system must attack. Are we within... Six centimeters. We're not, so we don't suffer an attack there. Careful positioning. These guys are, well, are they three centimeters away? They are, and we managed to say, so that's three plus, you know, we said greater than three. Now we have these two gunships, and I get to decide the order I'm going to do these in. I want to find out what these gunships do. we got to roll DH for this. They're going to go, again, the same. We haven't exhausted any of our decks yet. So they could go for any one of these. They're going to approach, they're going to pivot, they're going to make a double move, and then they're going to pivot to face the closest ship. So they're going to target my gunship now, 
And because my gunship battle group is within range, let me just bring that up a little bit closer so you can see those guys. Because my battle group is within range, we're going to suffer a total of 8d6. It's the exact same shot coming the other way. I don't have anybody that can hit him in the passive department, and they are going to just absolutely rake my guys. That's two hits there, plus another seven. That's nine hits that I have to save, and I'm only saving on ones unless I use this one of my, my uh, cards, my command cards. Now I'm saving on twos. And I'm going to save two of those damage. I'm only going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That eliminates one gunship. And I have to drop three damage tokens on this gunship. And now I have two sets of frigates. The first set of frigates, the boys in front, are going to be interested in one, two, three, four, five. They're going to move a total of eight centimeters to get close as close to this as they can. Uh, of this asteroid. They're going to stay on that three centimeter mark and we'll swing them around this way and they're going to face the nearest enemy ship. Well, I get enemy ship. The nearest of my ships, which is that gunship. And the frigates have turbo blasters. So I guess we need to... We should... I guess we'll just bring them straight up. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Now, they will suffer a passive attack on the part of my gunship. That's a bit of a problem. I'm gonna take the shot. If I roll any sixes, bad things happen because I'm so badly damaged. Oh, I forgot to check to see if I explode. Uh, the, the size one ship only explodes, I think on a one. When your ship goes kablooey, there's a chance that the core goes nuclear. And I, I can never remember, when a ship is destroyed, uh, before removing the destroyed ship, roll a d6. If it's equal to or under the mass of one, a six is not, I'm okay. He didn't blow up. I, sh I probably should have checked for that other gunship, though, right? If I roll a one, which I don't, so that's fine. Uh, okay, so where does that put us? It puts us at the gunship firing at these two frigates, and we roll two threes. The frigates have a silhouette of six, so that's two hits on the frigate. Unfortunately, the frigate also has shields of four, and he's going to make both saves. He takes no damage. Now, they can unload. Oh, they've turned to face the gunship. So they can unload with their primary weapon, which is a railgun, has a minimum range of nine inches. The railgun is meant to target other cruisers, the other big ships. Not quite battleship, right? These are the, these are the big boys. Oh, wait. Is the frigate a big boy? No, these are the big boys. See how much bigger he is? Be that as it may, he does still have... Er, what has he got? Turbo blasters with a range of 6. 4d6 going after my poor little gunship. And there's... Hold on. There's two frigates firing a total of 8 shots. And my gunship is going to go kabye bye He has a um, silhouette of 4. That's the only miss we got. And I gotta roll all ones, or else, yeah, he goes kerblooey. Hey, look at that, I saved two of them anyway. He still takes five damage, which removes him from the table. There's nobody close enough. If he blows up, he only damages ships that are within one centimeter of him. So maybe it didn't really matter if he blew up. I still have this frigate to go. Let's see where he winds up. He's going after number eight. So he's, he's content. He's just gonna stay right here and guard this, this objective marker. Okay, that, that is actually a bit of a problem because in the end turn, well, I still have this medium utility hauler over here, right? So I can bring him, he can pivot up to 90 degrees, and I can bring him 8 centimeters. If I give him the vector move, I can bring him, he, that doubles his movement, he can pivot and he can move another 8 to here and scan this rock, which will have four ore tokens on it, if we can blow it up. Ooh, vector, which means we probably wanted to come eight to here, and then we can pivot. We need to keep the, the asteroid in our front. Yeah, we got to stop right there, because we need to keep it in our front firing arc so we can blow it up real good. Now, bear in mind, 
scan step is the last thing we do, so we can't blow it up here on, on turn number two. Turn number two is just about over, but before we get to that, we have to deal with the uh, appearance of additional competitors. At the start of each round after the first, oh, at the start of each round after the first, oops, I forgot, no, did I, did I bring in, yeah, I should have brought in more ships, all right, well, what are you going to do? Uh, first of all, the end phase. At the start of the end phase, before earning revenue and once for each contract, if there's greater mass, which we have here, within three inches of objective, discard the top card. So for the Rexus Pearl, we have to discard the top club. We discard the three. For the diamonds, we have to discard the top club. No ace. For, are there any others? Um, these guys are... Did we move these guys? I thought, did I, you know, now that I think about it. Oh, they're at the three centimeter mark. So we did move them. We have a tie. We don't discard any more of these. That's the end of round number two. At the end of round number two, discard all of the clubs except for the ace. So the only thing you can get as the, the Rexus is, is calming down. You know, now that I think about it, he's parked here. We should have made some attacks. He's in dangerous space. He suffers one die and takes no damage. We should have rolled for these guys back here. We'll call it a wash with the fact that I should have brought in more ships. At the start of the third turn, I have to roll for each of my jumps. One here and one here. We'll roll for this one first, adding three. So we get a four there and we get an eight over here because it's turn three. So we have... One plus, additionally, at the start of each round after the first, roll a d6, add that, and then it says down here, um, equal to the mass of the battle grip or the round number. So we have to bring in one plus the round number. We bring in four fighters at this location. You. Four fighters. And over here, where we rolled a 5 plus 3, that's an 8. We have to bring in another battle group of the round number plus 1 frigate. Or the round number in the case of generated at the start of the round. So we have to bring in four frigates. These are frigates now. Zoop. How do we deploy them? Oh, except we don't deploy them at the jump point. We still go 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six. These frigates are going to deploy as close as possible to the ship closest, but not more than their jump range from the selected. Meaning they're going to appear right here. In line of battle, they just showed up somehow. These guys are going to appear. Now, we haven't exhausted any of the decks yet, so we roll the D8. And they are going to appear down here five centimeters away from the Rexus Pearl. Bling, 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 bling. Boy, they really don't want us to get any mag locks on that, do they? It, it's only worth two points. I'm not even going to worry about that anymore. In, instead, I'm just desperately trying to get a couple of more dollars out of these asteroids over here. I could deploy another jump point on this table. There's a couple of asteroids... Except that, remember that we only have one card left. So, instead, I think maybe what I want to do... You know, I could I might have scanned this. Do you have to scan mining with... Scan it with utility ship. Now, those were gunships. Wouldn't have done me any good. I gotta get utility ships close enough to scan. Uh, so, what does that mean for our command deck? Since I only have three ships on the table, I guess I'm going to... Just go first with all of them and see what I can do before I get blown to smithereens. I do have the ability to weather some attacks with these four command tokens. Let's see how that works out. We'll start with these light utility ships down here. We're going to move them. We're going to pivot to this direction and move four centimeters. And then we'll pivot again and move four centimeters. And if we are within five centimeters of this jump point, at the end of the move, we can go... Kabong, 
up to here, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to appear right there. We could attack the... Oh, no, we're going to appear right here because I don't want to suffer any passive attacks from these gunships. Okay, it's at the end of the movement phase. I'm going to jump in. Five centimeters drops my light utility ships here. They are within five centimeters of this rock, which means we can draw the last card. And I already knew this, but we scanned it, so there will be two space rocks there if we can blow it up. I don't think we've exhausted the deck just yet. That's the end of these light utility ships. We've already scanned this asteroid with this medium utility ship last turn. He's going to open fire on this asteroid. Asteroids have a silhouette of nine. The medium utility ship has a mining laser with a range of two, and we roll 2d12 to see if we can blow it up. We get two hits. Each of those hits does five damage, and that means this space rock goes kerblooey. Bear in mind, that's on the active pass, the active attack step. So because it's on that active attack step, I can, there's, there's two of the ore, and on the same turn that I blew it up, I can scan that rock, and I can pick up two of the ore. This remains an objective in play but I'll move the card out of the way. If I can get this guy back to here and jump out next turn, guess what? We're going to be riding high. We're going to be sitting pretty. I still have to do this ship group, and so this ship group is going to go to here, four, centi four centimeters. Uh, I'm going to vector again, and I'm going to turn in this direction, Actually, I could probably come out this way, give myself a little bit more space. I want to kind of hide behind the medium, and then I'm going to scan these, and so I've picked up the space rocks. Now it's a race to the jump point. If I can survive all of these attacks, if these independent contractors are distracted, I might be able to make a few more dollars. Note, by abandoning this table, I didn't see anywhere in the tactical, in the solo rules where these guys jump to another table. They're going to continue pursuing objectives over here. I'm not even going to worry about it. There's no other objectives on that table. There are now three objectives on the table. One, two, three. Two, four, six, I should say. Let's find out where these gunships go. They're going to go to here. They can move a total of 12, getting as close as possible to this asteroid, and then they're going to face my poor little light utility ships who can't do anything in kind. Oh, I get a command token because I flipped over a card. I only have five of those. I'm feeling a little better about this. Except that I now have to take eight shots from those gunships. And wow, that's a lot of ones. That's going to be eight. We got a silhouette of four. They're doing uh, eight, ten, twelve hits. That's ridiculous. Twelve hits? Come on. I'm going to re-roll. So there's our, our saves. We have, ooh, look at that. We've saved four of them. So we only take four hits, and then I have to save four more. I save five. I'm only taking seven hits. Oh, I like that. That means one of these guys goes kablooey, and if I roll a one, he's going to take his friend with him. Yeah, he takes one, so he's going to, this guy takes an attack for of mass times d6, and he takes one more hit, which his shields save. So he's still sitting on three wounds, but he survived the gunships. Then we have these two frigates. Let's find out where they go. And with the result of a five, these two frigates are going to fade back to here. Uh, oh, let me show that where that Rexus Pearl is drawing my aggro. So now this frigate is going to be interested in this area right here. He's going to slide up, attack the light utility ship with his turbo blasters for 4d6. Those are his auxiliary weapon. And he's going to get a total of five hits requiring five saves. And he blows up the light utility ship, which we knew was going to happen. I'm not too worried about that. I do have four fighter groups. Please don't roll a one or a two. 
and they are going to be interested in sticking around down here by the Rexus Pearl, out of the way. Nobody's in range. We're done with number three. Turn number three, we pull off all of the facilities, discard the Hearts deck. So there's no more chance that this will bother us on our escape. We also have to figure out what's the ship that comes on here, D6 plus four. And wouldn't you know it, four gunships are going to appear. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then they're going to all occur, appear right here. I'm going to put a nice big stack of one, two, three, four ships. Right about here, as close as we can get. They're all stacked up there, but it's not really going to make that big of a difference because I tell you what's going to happen here. I am going to seize the initiative with both of these groups. The rest of my command tokens are going to look a little something like this. We're going to make a high G turn. We're going to double our movement. We're going to move down here. Well, we're going to come over here. So we're... We need to stay six centimeters away from everybody so that when we get to within jump range, we there's no passive attacks. And then we jump out with these four. I think that buys us another eight... And we are going to wind up with, we were sitting on 8, we are going to wind up with a total of 16. That will end the game. We made 16 profit against a potential of 60. That's going to be a little over 25%. And that is the best possible outcome. Well, no, it's not. Actually, if you get the 35%, that's where you get a total of 9 capital. But look, we gained four capital, we'll take it. We could have done a lot worse, particularly with all those ships on at the end. Maybe the balance is a little better than I thought. Maybe I'm just being overly dramatic. Campaign time. I've got the next game we play. Campaign time. The next game we play will be scale five. I earned four more capital for winning, which means I have some options here. I can unlock asset insurance. When I'm carrying a token, I get plus one to my shields. Makes it a little survivable once I pick up those space rocks. I could get EMP, but the EMP is only valid if somebody executes a scan order near you, which doesn't happen in the solo game. That doesn't make sense. The Astro Beacon Net for three points. When I The first time I drop a jump point on the table... I get a free jump-in token to bring in a, a group, a battle group, without having to spend a command token. So that would be kind of nice in the long run. But instead, I think, rather than upgrading my tech tree, I could also unlock the bomber wing or the corvette. Now, the bomber wing is scale zero. It doesn't have a whole lot of... It's got some pretty good punching power. But it is fairly slow. Instead, I think I'm going to buy a Corvette. It would be nice to drop in a single ship. The Corvette is a Mass 2 ship that moves speed of 10. Crazy fast. It's got a silhouette of 5. Shields of 2. It's a little more survivable, but it's got a lot of guns. He can fire 6d6 at you if you're in his primary weapon arc. So I will do that. That's going to cost me 5 of my capital... But the Corvette is now mine. Research complete. That takes me back down to one capital. And for our next game, we will be playing with five cards in a deck. And that means the maximum achievable revenue is going to be uh, 75 points. Wait, the sum of the cards is 15, 90 points on the table. 90 points. So our target is going to be spending, this time around we spent 12 points. Next time around we're going to try to spend like 16 points. I got the Corvette. It's not going to take long to do that. But I think my Corvette is going to be able to deal with these swarms of gunships that just keep dropping on us all the time. Find out in our next episode. We've earned our promotion. We're barely acceptable. They have not determined my level of incompetence yet. So, I don't know, we've gone from clerk, are we going to go to, like, junior executive, or, no, we're drone. We go from clerk to drone before we go to middle management, and then to 
is it middle upper management? No, it's upper middle management. And then we'll have to go to lower upper management, middle upper management, upper management, vice president, vice president in charge of, I don't know, um, human resources. And then finally CEO for our 10th or 11th game. If we're not bored of this game, we only played four turns. I, this is probably going to wind up being about an hour long, this video. That's the way Mike writes them. That's the way we like them. Really complicated. Lots of little, 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 little steps. And then you look back and go, wait, I only played four turns? Seems like a lot more than that. That's because we're packing five gallons of fun in a 10-gallon turn. Till next time, I'm praying for you.